Okay, well, we're going to get started on this little painting. And this is the photograph we're going to use. And it's just a, a simple summer scene. We've got a whole bunch of yellow flowers and whatnot. And I'm going to go ahead and get started with toning my canvas. And then we'll chat about the uh, composition a little bit. I've got a little thumbnail of what I'm going to do. But I'm just going to start by putting in the large shapes as usual. So get my paints out here. And we're going to, I found some basic large shapes by doing a little pencil sketch of values. So we've got a bush and a tree. And I think for the value, Actually, I'm going to go ahead and sketch it in before we before we tone, and I think I'll tone with our major colors, kind of toning and blocking in at the same time, just for fun. It makes it a little bit quicker too for these for these sessions. So, what I've got going on is I've got a major area here. Let's look at the photo to do this. That's going to be behind the sunflowers. And that's going to be all dark. And that's what's going to help these wild sunflower type plants to show up, is having them as light against dark. So that's one of the first sort of compositional elements I'm going to be using, is a lot of light against dark. So we've got this light against dark, so this is all a dark shape. And then we've got a dark shape over here, which is a tree a little bit in the distance, sort of mid-ground. And that's going to help us, too, to um, to start creating a little bit of distance, because we don't have much sky in this one, not a whole sky showing through. But we do have some further distant plants back here, bushes, that we can use to create some depth in the painting. And we've got a whole bunch of sky holes in this tree. And we're going to keep this back tree, I think, really interesting with its sky hole shapes and not super solid. So we'll do that. And then I really liked this, the way this yellow uh, flowers, these wildflowers back here, kind of swoop around. You get this from the shadow of the tree, um, you get this swooping design that I really like. So I want to play that up in the final. Um, and then we've got these white wildflowers that I'm going to have kind of swooping the other way. So that looks like this. We've got, we've got this swoop of dark coming in there. And then I'm going to have a swoop of the white flowers going back that way. Just for fun. It seemed like a fun thing to do. And... And we've got our sunflowers over here, about a third of the way in. And in the painting, in the photo, we've got smaller sun, a shorter sunflower here and a longer one here. And I'm just going to reverse that so that my longer one is on the outside, taller one, and then a shorter one here. But we'll play a lot with that, those flowers and, and how they're working so they're not going to look exactly like that. We'll see. I'm probably going to make them a little bigger, a little more obvious, a little more fun. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens with those. But So we've got this gradation of these yellow flowers going back and the white flowers going back. So let's see what we can do with that. Right, the first thing I'm going to do is sketch in those major elements that I want. I want to see. So those are going to be... Okay, so if I kind of look at my canvas and break it into thirds just with little tick marks on the side, then I can keep in mind that that important compositional technique of using the rule of thirds. So I want to keep my sunflowers uh, in this area along this kind of thirds line. But I'm going to make them a little more dominant than they are than they are in the photo. 
And then the darkness, the dark bush behind it, is going to go up uh, a, little, a little higher than a third. It's going to go up here. And we'll have this swoop of the dark coming in on this third, going in about halfway, and then coming back up here. There's halfway. Yeah, it's going to come about here. So we're going to get this interesting kind of swoop going on. We'll see how that develops. But I just want to think about that. And the bottom of it over here will then connect to my to my uh, bottom see bush. You. Let's see. Um, this back one is going to come back about here. We're going to have that. And then over here on this third line we'll have this bush starting, or this tree, starting here. Maybe going out somewhere like that. Going up here, and then its darkness, the dark shape that it forms, will come over here. And it will kind of connect to this. So this foreground bush is going to have a little bit of a lighter shape here, and that's where the dark of this tree is going to connect to the dark of the bush. And that's just some sunlight showing up and hitting that somewhere along there. We'll see how that goes. But this whole shape back there is going to be dark. And then this whole shape is going to be dark. So we're going to block them in that way. Got one more little bush coming back here. Or small tree. So that's going to create a you know, more sets of depth as these different bushes walk back into the distance. So that should be kind of fun. We'll see how we can develop that as that walks back into the distance there. So that's just a real simple sketch that we're going to do because there's so much light and dark in here. I want to block it in with these kind of lights and darks showing. It's kind of a com combination of a block in and a uh, and just toning the canvas. So what I'm going to do is go to my largest number six bright brush and I'm going to start by toning in this white or this light um, sunflower area. I'm going to use white and I'm just going to use just a tad of yellow. I want to keep this really white and and solid so that I can come over it later with my yellow sunflowers. One thing in dealing with yellow as a, as a pigment, as a paint to use, is that it's very transparent so you can it can be really problematic trying to get a nice solid yellow, bright yellow color and, and still have it be light enough. You end up having to do a lot of layers so one way you can deal with that is to use white first and set down a nice solid opaque white um, bit and then you can come back with your yellow over the top of it and it'll give us some kind of warmth that way and covering. So I'm going to use this same light and I'm going to block in these light, this light area in the back this is going to be like yellow um, bushes. I'm going to go ahead and go through the bush a little bit because we're going to get some some holes coming through. We'll see. But I want that light in the back there. And this is all going to be light here. So I'm just kind of getting these big shapes. And obviously this front part's going to be light too. It's going to have those uh, white flowers in that area. So I think what I'll do there is move to a different color slightly. I wanted to, I, I squeezed out some yellow over here because I want to start by making some green because, a bunch of green because this has got a lot of green in this painting. So I'm just using thalo blue and you could see that there was much less thalo than there was yellow. 
uh, just to make myself a base green to start with. Kind of like you'd do if you had a tube paint, but I like to minimize the number of tube paints I use. So I can just real quickly mix up a big pile of green and I'll be able to use that throughout the painting. So I'm going to kind of move it over to the side a little bit so I have more, more mixing area. Okay. All right. So there's some green mixed up. Because so I think I'll put a very light green just to block in this this front light area. So starting with my white, because whenever I want to make a very light color, you want to start with your white and add your color to it. Just to keep from wasting paint. So I'm just doing this kind of combination toning block-in. So it's a little simpler than I would do with a block-in, but it's a little more complicated than just toning. A little more deep, a little more variations going on. Because we do gotta, we do need to get that canvas, get some, uh, get that filled up a little bit so that it isn't so absorbent. I keep trying to use the word absorptive, but I, absorbent is the word I'm looking for. All right, a little more green with white. Just to soak that up. And you can feel how the canvas really soaks up that paint. Of course, if you have a higher quality canvas that's got more layers of gesso on it, then it won't so soak up the paint quite as much. But if you use the inexpensive ones like I do, then you really need to get a little bit of something on there first. So that's what I wanted to do with the lights in there. So we've got some a little bit darker back there. So I'm going to add a little bit more green to that. And I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue. Because as we go in the distance, we get lighter and bluer and more neutral. So just took my base green and added a little bit of ultramarine blue to it. Because back here there's going to be some bushes, distant bushes, that are going to be somewhere in this value. We're thinking about values. Definitely thinking about values. So we've got our lights and our medium and then we're going to have our darks. And I don't think I'll go green to put in my darks. I think I'll go uh, ultramarine blue, I think, just to do something a little bit different. And maybe I'll add, let's add a touch of a alizarin crimson to that. Make it a little bit purple. Okay. That'll be this is gonna be super dark. But that's okay. I want I want to block it in here as my dark. So I can see those I can see the shapes that I'm making, the abs big abstract shapes that I'm making. So this is a uh, ultramarine blue with a little alizarin crimson. So I hope that these uh, I hope that these inspire you a little bit to if you're not painting right along with me, I hope they inspire you to pick up your paints later and do some experimenting and see what you come up with with this little image. It's the fun part about it, you know, it's Everybody's going to look at a photograph and they'll come up with something a little bit different depending on what interests you about the image. And so that's really fun. That's how you start developing your style and and seeing, you know, what 
you start really just reacting and responding to what you like particularly. And I, I particularly like bright colors, pretty colors, and interesting shapes. So that's what I kind of respond to. But that's not what everybody responds to. Sometimes, you know, you could like things that are more natural, or a lot of different things. Maybe more abstract, maybe less abstract, maybe very detailed. That's okay too. <laughs> Not that you need my permission, but you know, there's no rules in art. You can't you can't get the manual and do it correctly and pass the test and know that you've done it correctly. The only correct way is what makes you feel good about what you're painting and what gives helps you let you have a fun time. Let's do um, let's do for this slightly lighter area, which is going to be this bush in sunlight. Let's go with some purple and white added to that. Since this is kind of a purpley color, I think I'll go with a, a slightly lighter version of the purple. That's kind of fun. It's going to end up more green, but this is just for fun. So I don't have all these greens I'm looking at. So these are sort of my lighter greens, some here, and then this this one back there is going to be... Actually, with him, I think I'm going to go ahead and bring in some... Ah, I'll bring in some phthalo blue into the purple. And that's going to be a little bit neutralizing because there's red in that purple, and there's green in that phthalo blue. So normally phthalo would not be neutralizing at all, but because of what's there, it's going to be a little bit neutralizing. So that this bush that's going to be back here is a little more distant than what we've got going on there. And keep that in mind. And of course throughout this area up there I'm going to have sky holes. So, which are areas where the sky is showing through. But I won't have those in there right now. Let me see if I can fill up this. I want to make sure as I'm, this is the blocking and the toning, another one of the factors is making sure I get all the white of the canvas covered. So, got to go back and make sure I do that because I don't want those little white sparkles coming through later. If I didn't have this to do and to connect with you guys, and to try to share my art a little bit and to share my love of my art and how much you know it's I can't think of anything better to do when you start getting anxious about COVID and what's going on than pick up a paintbrush and do some painting it's just such such a such a good thing to do to relieve those I, I, I read a thing the other day that really struck me that um, imagination, anxiety, when we get anxious, that happens because we're using our imagination in a, in a I won't say a wrong way, but in, in a way that's not helpful to us. So very imaginative people also tend to be very anxious people, and I know I've used to be, before I started painting, I had a lot more anxiety. I would just get anxious about things. So if you, if you find that you're a very anxious person, it's because you're a very imaginative person. And that's good, you know, that's a positive thing. All right, we've got Helen here. Oh wait, we've got Jay first saying, 
What do you look for when choosing a reference photo? Okay, I'll address that. And we have Helen. I love to learn painting the scene from Orlando, Florida. Yes. Well, Jay, what I look for, first of all, I just look for anything that just catches my eye for no logical reason at all, but just uh, responding to an image. And so a lot of times I'll flip through images very quickly and just respond to them. Um, just sort of viscerally, you know, have a, a physical response to to the image, and and without really knowing why or thinking about why, and then I'll come back. I'll usually pick out a number of those photos, and then I'll come back and I'll start th thinking about it a little bit more. Th starting to think about composition and what I could do with that composition, and I almost always look for light, so. I'm looking for an interestingly lit scene, and this one had just sort of, it has just overall, you know, light from the top, but the shadows that are formed by the dark areas and the light areas created interest to me, and I really like that. So I look for light, and I look for interesting shapes, and I look for areas that I can take advantage of light against dark and dark against light. And it's not always, what I don't look for is if you look at a photo and it has something unusual or odd, like, oh wow, look at that really weird tree, or look at this strange effect uh, in, that there's a reflection in the, in the water and it looks really strange. You want to avoid things that catch your eye just because they look strange or, or different, because those don't paint out well. They don't... Um, they just don't. They they don't translate to a painting very well because you're the same way it looked odd in the photo. It's going to look odd in your painting, and so people aren't going to understand what it is, even though it's an oddity. I don't know. That's just something that I've learned over time. I look for something that's got distance, so I can create depth in the painting, unless I'm doing a real, you know, like the one we did last week with the flowers or or some kind of close-up macro kind of thing you know but if I'm looking at a landscape I'm gonna make sure that there's some place that gives me a little bit of distance so I can create depth in the painting and then I look for interesting shapes I'll you know not necessarily use all of these shapes but I'll but I'll translate them, you know, I'll use some of them and I'll adjust colors and I'll adjust shapes, but I have something to go from. Some, you know, I don't want to have to make up everything um, because I'll, I'll, you kind of tend to lose all sense of realism when you make up everything. And you also tend to start switching over to your left brain instead of your right creative brain when you start remembering because your mind has labeled everything so it knows what a tree looks like it has kind of a little almost an icon of a tree and it you know that it's that it can a symbol that it can bring up so if you're painting all from imagination there's a tendency for your mind to go back to these sort of symbolic representations of things instead of painting what you see which is always more interesting more interesting shapes things that you wouldn't you haven't necessarily stopped and thought about and looked at in the past. So that's kind of where that's going. Anyway, I hope that helped, Jay. What am I going to do next? Okay, so next I usually start in the background and move forward. Not sure that I'm going to do that this time. I want to play with putting a lot of yellow in here and then using the background to create my shapes around it. So that might be kind of interesting. So I'm going to start, I'm staying with my big brush as long as I possibly can. And that helps me be a little more loose. So I'm going to bring in some more yellow here. And you'll see what I mean. If you put that yellow up there now over the white, you can get some nice rich yellow. Whereas if I put it over the dark area, you can see how transparent that is when it's on its own. So that's why I did all that white area and I'm just gonna kind of look at areas where I want 
some yellow flowers and I'm going to try this technique of doing doing um, working around putting a lot of yellow in and then creating my shapes by using my dark to come around them and we'll see if that works it's an experiment I, I know that in general I like it when I use I make shapes by painting around that's called negative painting in general I like the effect that that has so we're gonna try to expand on it a little bit and have it be even more so so putting a bunch of yellow in there and then I'm gonna let that dry while I work on some other stuff. Oh, I do want one. I've got dark down here, but I do want some of this going off the canvas a little bit. We'll see. Got to try to get that feeling a little bit organic and not so not so stiff. Okay, let's go back to that background. Put some of these lighter background bushes in. And I'll try sticking with my big brush, but I'll probably, because the shapes are pretty small, I'll probably have to move to my smaller brush. So I want a green. I'm going to bring some of my mixed green in here. But I want it to be yellower. More of a yellow green. I'm going to put a little Indian yellow in there because that's a more neutralizing color. And I'm going to use some white. So you really, really, I don't think I want a yellow green back there. I need to, I'm bringing in some thalo because I need that, that green to be different. I've got so much yellow green coming forward that I need this little bit of green back there to be different. So I get some differences. So I'm going to put thalo in there. As I put the thalo, I'm adding white. Yeah, I'm going to have to go to my smaller brush because I just need smaller shapes. Let's see if we can do that. We'll have to see how um, we'll have to see. Okay, let's do some more. Let's give it some uh, let's give it a little more blue on the edge here and a little more white. So I stay in those values, generally in that value range, but I've got some differences going on back there. Going to be some of the holes coming through this stuff. Develop that. That's kind of fun. Let's see. Let's go a little bit lighter with that color. Just make some more dark, medium, and light. You know, in each area that we paint, if you want form, you've got to have dark, medium, and light. If you just leave one value, you won't have form. You'll just have So, when you start getting a lot of paint going on in an area, if you bring your, your brush more flat to the canvas, you can get more paint to stick. Sometimes when you're really, uh, well, sometimes when you've got a lot of paint, it, it starts not sticking. So I'm going to leave that for a little while and see what we think about that. And I'm going to start in with these yellows. Now I'm going to start, I'm going to do some green first. Let's use this yellow green. I'm going to start creating texture. So I'm going to start creating texture. You can see I'm way darker here than my value that I put as the block in. But I'm going to get back to that value. I just want to start with some texture. And so we'll do some different... Here's some yellow, with a little bit of green, 
lighten it up a little bit. That's about the same color, isn't it? Oh, it's a little yellower. So that's cool. Put some of that in here. Put some in here. Let's just get some texture going on. This shape was supposed to be much skinnier, not so rounded. Alright. That's some stuff going on there. And then let's put some yellow with white. My brush was dirty, so it's a little green. Let's get some of this. Ooh, I know, back here in the back, let's do more white. Because we want to get this, too, these yellows, to have a gradation from lighter back here. brighter in the foreground. So, you know, like I said, my my sort of aesthetic is is bright, pretty colors. So, I kind of sacrifice, I definitely sacrifice realism for the sake of that. But that doesn't have to be the way you paint it. You can paint this by following the photo and mixing up more realistic color. Let's see. Get some rounded shapes, a little scrubbing motions, just creating some texture back there. My favorite word, texture. All right. I'm moving forward with these colors and values and trying to see what what I can do with them. So I think I'll do some in here too. Let's do some yellow. A little bit brighter yellow in this area. Maybe start wider. And that's too white, but I think I'll put some of it back here. Remember our old adage, if it's too light, it's just about right. Because they'll dry darker. I think I spent the first probably five years I painted with acrylic paints, having everything come out like dark night scenes, because I, I just couldn't get it in my head that they dry darker. So if you put it down and it looks just exactly right, you're wrong, because it's going to dry darker. And I'm not saying I don't still do that, because that would be a lie. I do still do that, but I'm still just trying to remember more often. So, let's put in some texture in here with these yellow flowers. Just throwing paint on the canvas randomly to see if we can build up layers. And that is the beauty of the acrylic paint is the fact that we can build up layers. Let's bring some of this yellow-green into here. Let's bring, because it's got right at the bottom of this dark, we get some you can kind of see some of the stemmery going on here. That's a that's an official word, stemmery. Alright. I'll probably try to come in a little bit and do some, you know, just a touch here and there of more obvious flowers. But for now, I just want to get those values and the shapes generally. Because they also are getting, um, they're getting, uh, bigger, right? The shapes are getting bigger as they come forward. So, we'll kind of play with that as we go along. So this is a uh, phthalo blue and uh, alizarin crimson, and that just gives me a very dark color. It's a dark purpley color. And I'm going to use this for this trunk back here. Start laying in this tree trunk. And the tree on the image is, is a fairly straight ahead boring tree, but you know me, I don't do that. I like my 
trees to be wiggly, bumpy and gnarly. So I will do a little bit of that to start shaping up that tree. I think I'll add a little bit of Indian yellow to that and a little bit of white. That's going to make a very gray color. So we used all three primaries and that's that makes gray, right? Sometimes it makes gray. Depends on the pigment. But those three pigments, Indian yellow, phthalo blue, and alizarin crimson will make you a very neutral dark. I'm going to add more Indian yellow to make that a less neutral dark. Add some some things to that that uh, trunk to give it some interest. And I can come back with my dark and change the shapes a little bit just for fun. See what we can do there. This is going to have a dark area in here. So I'm going to get into some darks in the greens. So I'm going to start with my mixed up green that I have going on. I'm going to add phthalo blue to that. That's going to darken me up. I'm going to add just a touch of alizarin crimson. And for a dark, that's going to darken up and neutralize that green a little bit. So that I got some dark to work with. I'm going to add, let's see, I'm experimenting here because I want the foliage on this back tree to be a little bit different needs to be a little bit cooler. So let's go ahead and add more thalo. Oh, that's ultramarine. Let's add more thalo. Let's be wild and crazy here. Keeping these colors really bright and fun. Let's see what we can do with that. That's almost a turquoise color. Ooh, I like it. That's pretty. So. So there's, there's some great shapes back here in this tree with um, the sky showing through. Oh, but behind it, okay, I'm just going to do a little bit of this because behind it we've got this other bush. So let's lighten this up even more and let's add a little ultramarine this time. I usually start with the background and move forward, but I'm all squirrely today. I'm just going every which way. I'm going to try to leave some of the purples showing through because I think they're really pretty. Alright, so we've got... In the photo, this tree is actually in front of this tree. But I like it in back of this tree. And it's going to have some of this dark. Where's my dark? Make it a little bit lighter. I'm going to add a little more yellow to it to, to make a some kind of tree trunk back here. It's a little bit lighter than the one there. And it too then has a little bit of shadow under it. But all these, these crazy wild um, Yellow flowers are uh, are coming up over the shadow, so you don't don't see a lot of that shadow on the ground from the trees because of the the flowers that are there. So that's looking a little bit flat. So I'm going to do um, I'm going to go a little bit lighter with a little more Indian yellow, just to give myself a couple of different values back here on this background tree. I want some little peaks of that purple showing through because it's pretty. And then I need to go a little bit darker on here. Let's see. Just down at the bottom. Get some a little bit darker. We'll leave that there for now and then see if we like it, or if we don't like it, we can always shift it later, but I'm going to get sort of the general stuff done. 
these sky holes are really important. I don't know if you remember them, but there's there's really fun sky holes in this tree that keeps it really light. So I'm going to go ahead and put in, start trying to develop those sky holes. And I'm going to do it with combination of ultra and thalo. And then white. Good amount of white. To give myself a blue because this is summer and the sky is blue. Of course the sky is always blue in my world. Oh well that's not true because I love the rain too. So sometimes it's cloudy and rainy. Um, I think I can stay with this size brush. But I want to put some sky holes in here. And then come over it with the foliage. And there's going to be some sky holes in this one. I'm going to do different sizes and shapes. And to make my sky holes interesting. Let's see what we can do. There's some sky holes up here. Because we can always come back over the top and settle those back in, but I want to get them in there. So this is where you, you know, I can kind of go over the top with the sky holes and then when I come back I can change them, but I can do some experimenting with different shapes. What kind of sky hole shapes? And if you just go really quickly and loosely then what happens is some of them work and some of them don't work at all but you can try to do that part where you turn off your brain and see what happens alright so that's a few sky holes going on we like those those are kind of fun and now we can put some some uh, foliage around them. Back and forth, you know, you can have this. Ooh, that needs some red. Ooh, I just, oh my goodness, that needs some red. I'm going to take some alizarin and some purple and a little bit of white. I need some warm color back here. That That's just looking so gray. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm going to put some red in that. Red in that. Needs a little more life. Some red in there. Okay. Alright, so that is what I want to do with sky holes. And then I want to bring in that foliage. And some of that foliage is really dark. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this with my green and I'm gonna add red to it. Not that much red. Some red to it and some phthalo. Again, going even darker than I did before. Ooh, you know what? Let's not add red. Let's add purple. Purple's got red in it and blue in it. So it's going to... I think I went a little too dark. Let me see. Yep, a little too dark. With the red and the blue in it, it will neutralize and uh, make it bluer. Let's try that. Oh, that's an ugly color. Nope, don't like that. All right. Start over. Let's take some of this and green and add more thalo to it. Just a tad of purple. It's just, you know, it's, it's the tiny, tiny amounts, the little corner amounts when you're trying to make a color. That's much better. And you guys probably cannot see the difference in that at all. But that other color was very dull and... Uh, dull looking and I didn't like it. Just didn't like it. Okay. So I'm coming down over this this area back there so I get some fun light over dark going on. And I don't want all I'm not gonna stay all this dark in this tree. It's gonna be a little lighter because this kind of dark will go up here. But I want to start with that especially where it connects the branches are connecting on the bottom to the leaves because it gives me 
a connection there. Yeah, you know, you kind of don't want tree trunk and then leaves like two separate things, two separate colors that um, that aren't. Let's add a little bit of yellow to that. So what's that going to do? All right, it's still pretty dark, so we need to go lighter. I'm going to go lighter, and I'm going to add some more yellow to that. I'm thinking about the kind of the forms of those branches and how the light's going to be kind of hitting the tops. So I'm thinking about that to make, you know, not just polka dots, but to make f shapes back there. And I'm also thinking about keeping, you want to have nice thick paint on your brush. Lots of paint on your brush. Don't be skimpy, because if you have, if you don't have enough paint on your brush, then you're you're kind of brush brush brushing to get coverage and when you start brush brush brushing you lose you lose your brush strokes which doesn't make sense because you're brushing more but it's true you lose the definition of your brush strokes and everything gets a little bit mushy let's see if we can't get our yellows dry here so let's Let's see if we can't do something with this yellow. I'm, try I'm debating whether I want to put some stemmage in there first before I start doing flowerage. Maybe I do. Maybe I want a little bit of stem going on. So here's some green. Oh, here's another thing to do too with your acrylic paints. Keep your spritz bottle handy so you can spritz them during your session if you start um, getting a little bit dry. Also I have wet paper towel under my palette paper here and that also helps to keep me a little more moist. So this is going to come I'm going to have a smaller one over towards here and I'm going to have a bigger one here. Try to and all of them, there's going to be some offshoots here. This is like a multi, multi-stemmed kind of sunflower. I don't know if it's actually even a sunflower because the leaves at the bottom don't look sunflower-like to me at all. But um, that's okay. It's going to have some leaves. I'm going to put sunflower-like leaves on mine, not. The ones that are there look like, I don't know, dandelions or something. Maybe this is a huge variety of dandelions. This is a great color. I'm going to put some of this in here, too. Start creating this texture. Ooh, you know what? We wanted. We want those white flowers. Uh, I, might start, I might start putting in some shapes for the white flowers so that can be drying while we work on the sunflowers a little bit. Yeah, let's do that. So these white flowers are not going to have, they're not going to be white, because that would be boring. We're going to do some, there are going to be some purples and blues in there. So we're going to start with blue, that's ultramarine blue, and I'm adding white to it. So they're going to be light, but they'll have a shadow side. And I, what I would really want to think about in these is... Some of them are going to are going to go into this area here. So there's going to be a few of these back here. I've got these funny sort of almost yin yang shapes going on there and that I that I want to maintain. So I'm going to do that with those f white flowers going back that way. They go off the canvas. And then I love the way their shapes are like they're, the the heads are like this way that way. I think these are they kind of remind me of Queen Anne's Lace, but they're not quite like Queen Anne's Lace, so I don't know what they are. But, of course, back there they'll be very small, and then up here we'll have some that are quite big. And this is wet, so you can see that that's all mixing together. 
but for right now I don't mind because I'm just trying to get an idea of where I'm going to put these. And remember, connect shapes. Don't leave them as unconnected polka dots, but connect those shapes. The edge of this has bumpiness to it. We've got all these white flowers. The little head's going this way and that way and this way and that way. Alright, kind of that starts creating that kind of texture going on there. So let, now let's make our green. Got our mixed up green. Going to avoid our ugly green pile. And going to add blue to it. Phthalo blue. So I'm darkening it up. I'm going to darken this up quite a bit. This is going to be our color that goes around our yellow flowers. So, and you know what? Well, let me put a little bit of this in and think about. But I'm going to switch to my smaller brush to try to get some shapes in here. And let's see. I'm going to look at my reference photo but not follow it exactly because I know what. Some of these are going to be like facing this way. And some of them are going to be straight up, straight ahead. I'm just making little marks and trying to start make, um, start to make sunflower-ish shapes. Leave them connected in places. And move around. I'm squinting. I wish you could see my face because I'm sure it's quite comical. I'm squinting a lot to try to kind of see overall shapes and what might be fun in there. and try not to be too symmetrical or too precious about it. I got my small brush but I'm trying to use it as boldly as I can to boldly go. Sorry, Star Trek fan here. Uh, trying to just put... and you know what, don't, don't, when you're doing stuff like this, the beauty of acrylics is don't worry about it. If if some of the marks you're making don't work, we'll just paint over it. We'll just do another layer and paint over it. So, no worries there. Never any worries when you're painting. This isn't rocket science. It's not brain surgery. So, whatever happens, it's for fun, you know, you gotta not get stuck on the product so much as you think about the fun of the process of doing it and how you're enjoying it. Because if you're not enjoying it, why the heck are you doing it, right? That's really why I kind of started going away from realism as much. Because you can do it. It's just kind of tedious and takes a long time and well, it doesn't for everybody. There are certainly plenty of artists out there that can do a highly realistic painting in a very short period of time. But I am not one of them. So I started realizing that the reason I'm doing it is to have fun. And so I am started focusing that on that more and on techniques like this one that helped me relax and and just enjoy it a little more and that's when I think um, you know there's people like realism too and there's nothing wrong with that 
sometimes it can be very sometimes I'll do some really hyper realistic stuff and it can be very meditative to just uh, just sit and slowly look at, at a painting or an image just inch by inch oops and find what it's about and recreate that. That can be a lot of fun too. Alright, so that kind of gives me some shapes going on there, which I like. And I'll leave that to dry for a little while. Well, I think about some of these other greens back there. And there was this area right between these two trees where we got a little bit of lighter things going on. So I'm going to switch back to my number four brush. Gloria thinks it might be some kind of a thistle. Yeah, could be. Definitely could be. Looks kind of thistle-like, huh? But it's sunflowers in mine. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's I don't name them. You see? You don't want to name things. Then you're bringing in your left brain. And you're getting out of your creative. You just want it to go from your eye to... From your eye to the um, to the hand, no middlemen. The brain does not make a good middleman when it comes to painting. I mean, there's a place for, there's certainly a place for thinking and painting. But I like to do it like after I do this part, where I'm just painting, and then I'll come back later and do some thinking and you know kind of analyze where did it go what's working what's not working and that's sort of something for later but right now I'm kind of doing that in between thing and of course if I've got a little bit of it there I need to add another value because otherwise it will be flat so I'm going to go into these lighter yellow, lighter greens. Oops, too light. I got into the yellow. And I'm going to make sure you got plenty of paint on your brush when you do this. Don't be skimpy with the paint or you will not be as happy. It's really frustrating to put down the perfect brush stroke and then realize you didn't have enough paint on your brush so you've got to redo it. So here's just some area here. It might be too much. We might come back to that but I'm going to leave it for now and see if I like it or not. So let's Let's bring back in some more of these darker greens. Green with phthalo added. Which is what we used in here. Thalo is really transparent. You can see that when I came down over these lighter areas with the phthalo, mostly phthalo color there. You can see how transparent it is. So even though it's a really highly staining color, it's very, it takes over and mixes and it's very got a lot of uh, pigment to it. It's also very transparent, which makes it really wonderful for mixing. If you have really opaque colors, they don't mix as well. So you got to have to decide what you're using it for. So this has got this shadow comes along down in here see if I can put some shadow in here because this comes over here comes up a little bit more right around the tree but it can have it be as big or small as you want to there's no rules there just some back here so I wanted to, it's mostly purple in there now so I wanted to add some green to it and then the same thing down here but I'm going to switch I'll put a little bit in and then I'm going to switch to a different brush, I think. But I want this 
that's mostly dry in there. It's still a little bit tacky, so I'm going to be a little careful with that. And this, of course, I can come down and around these shapes so I don't create a straight line, but I've got some shapes going on there. I can thicken up these areas where I painted the, did the negative painting. Where I can see through it, I can come back in. It's creating texture. I don't want to get rid of all of my purple. Because I love the way that purple acts against the yellow. And you can't see it as much, but this dark dark here is really a dark purple. And it shows up as purple. And so that being the complement of the yellow, uh, it gets um, it gets a nice complementary thing going on there and helping that yellow pop even more. So we've got the complementary colors and we've got dark against light and that all helps it be a little more poppy. So how I need to bring some form to this dark thing behind me there. So I want to add a little bit of Indian yellow to that and a little bit of white. Let's see how that goes. I'm trying to find the greens in these that, you know, they're all a little bit different so that we have some different things going on. But this whole, you know, it's going to have some parts of the bush sticking out, catching the sun here and there. Probably down here. This needs to go be a little more. obvious that that's the edge of the bush coming in and some of it's going to come we don't want to stop we don't want to create a halo around our flower so we'll go ahead and come into the flowers a little bit with some of these just creating form into our bush so it's not a flat color and we create our form with having dark, medium, and light, right? So I think I'll put a little more dark, dark down at the bottom. Let's just take purple and add some thalo to it. Ooh, that's going to be a bright color. It's dark, but it's also vivid. So just down at the bottom here and here and there in this bush, I'm going to add some more form with this dark, dark. Something like that. Let's see, I'll leave that there for now. That's the key, you gotta tell yourself, leave that there for now so that you don't just keep fussing. Fussing isn't helpful. Ooh, I like that color though. Let's see if I Oh, that goes too bright, I think. I want to add a little bit of that in. I just added white to that. Get some little bit lighter values. Ooh, that's pretty. Love that color. So I'm going to give me some form there. Bring that in here. Okay, that will do that. Start, you know, if you have that dark and then you bring those little bits of light up like that over it, you get those wonderful leaf shapes. Makes it look like it's something growing. Let's try to do something with these white flowers. Let's see. I'm going to use my small brush. Uh, oh, actually, I need to fill in some of these greens around my white. Now that I know where my white shapes are going to be, I can bring in... I'm going to bring in some green. So this is the yellow greens up here. So I'm going to go into some more blue greens in light value up around the white flowers. Just for a difference so that I see that yellow shape that I've got going down there. And then I can see something different going on here. So let's see. I've got my smaller brush. These have... I don't really even see 
what kind of stemmage they have on there. But they just have green. It's just kind of an all over green. I think I'm going to break out my liner brush here though to give me some some fussiness, some activity going on. I need some dark and light in there too to create. Yeah, let's break out the liner brush. I like my liner brush for um, oh, I couldn't find it before, and now I have two. That's magic. Okay. I um, think I'll use this a little bit darker green. When I, you lose a, use a liner brush, you want to add a little water to your paint so that it flows. More like ink, but not too much. So I'm going to just keep this real loose in here and add some... some uh, stemmage. I need more paint. Got to mix up some more of that paint. So it was this our starting green with some phthalo blue and some white. So it's going to be darker than the darker than those light yellows, but not super dark. So I want this whole area just to read as light. So I'm going to get squiggly with this. Just to do some squiggles with my liner brush. That's what I like about this liner brush is that you can create kind of this chaos that you see in, in these kind of natural settings. Get some of it up here. Create some texture, and again, this is like the same thing, you know. It's not, don't worry about it being really accurate. If there's something that you don't like, you can just redo it. But so, and I just want to stay in this foreground area because I don't want to get too far back there and create detail back there. That's not going to be detailed. See if I can do a little bit of the lighter. Let's create some texture. Squigglies. This is the way that this brush is long and thin and soft like this. It lets it kind of squiggle along very nicely, creating some chaos. Against dark, remember that light against dark is really helpful. Okay, I think I'll stop there. That part, and then bring in a little more colors into our white flowers with our smaller brush. This is a number two bright brush. Okay, so we've got some purple. Oh, that was like that was a uh, blue. Mm. But let's bring some purple. That was ultramarine blue. But let's take some purple and white. Get a real, really light purple. And so, do what I say, not what I do. Start with your white, not with your purple, so that you don't end up with a big pile of paint. So. So these are going to have some purple in them. I build up in some texture with these different colors, then that makes them a little more interesting. Thinking about the kind of shape of the flowers being sort of, you know, Cone shaped, I don't know what, kind of like half circles. And back here, it just fades away into nothing. No shapes at all. But I get this, I, I get this swoop 
want that swoop of the shape of those. So that's some pink added to that. Now let's go and get some white. Add just maybe a touch of yellow to it. No, let's add um, a touch of red to it. Just to warm up that white a little bit. You don't want straight on white. It's really chalky and not very pretty. Okay, so now try to do these I'm holding my brush really loosely and really flat to the canvas so that I get hopefully some uh, and I'm using this white this lighter color to kind of blend some of these colors together a little bit so they're not quite so uh, geometric brush stroke kind of but they're kind of more blendy. And keep those lighter ones around here. Kind of like that. Maybe there's some and back here they get they just kind of blend together. It's good for now, and then we'll decide later if we need to adjust some stuff with that. But I'm getting the overall look I want. But I want some, uh, in those green shadow areas, I want some, uh, something. A little something, something. Ooh, I think I need to come in with, let's go to, so this is our darker green. More thalo in our green. But... Right on the edge of that, I'm going to bring in a little bit of white so that back in the distance, they're not quite that dark. But what I want to do is soften up some of these edges. So I'm just barely touching my the tip of my brush to the canvas and pulling it up, upwards, to give me a soft edge to that shadowed area as if it's, you know, grasses or these things going on, but it just softens it so it's not a line. I can use the edge of it to create a few more obvious kind of stem edges going on. And then when I get in the more foreground Let's go back to a little bit darker. So in this one here, you can I can create some shapes here. I'm being mindful of my light shapes I created and moving around them. But I want to break that up so it's not quite such a line. And this is where you can, if, if any of those shapes you put down you don't like, you can redo them at that point. This is a real sharp line back there, so I want to fix that. I think I'm going to fix that with some yellow. I'm going to come in with my light yellow and fix that real strong line back there. Just soften it up a little bit. Of course that paint is dry so it's not going to blend so much as I'll be able to just pull up into it a little bit. And then I can come back with some green. While that is wet maybe add some of this yellow to it so it's a sort of in between. And I can just keep going back and forth until I feel like that's softened up enough. Hmm. 
fun. I don't know why I did that. I don't hate it. Soften up that tree trunk a little bit. Um, except it's a little too soft. So let me bring in that purple. Add a little more definition to this tree. More character, maybe. Bring some character into this one. I need some, um, I'm going to bring some red into that. A little bit lighter. Just need something a little bit warmer in here. Set that off. Maybe some of the get some branches going through that. Yeah, maybe gives it a little more interest. Just a tad more interest back there. Okay, I'm pretty happy with those. I might have a touch of something even whiter on there, and I might. Yeah, this is too dark. That value is uh, just a little too dark. So I'm going to come in. I was on the right track lightening it up before, and I'm just going to continue that. My green with thalo and I know what I need to do. Okay, this is. These are these are these yellow plants in shadow. So I'm going to come in with Indian yellow. There was green on my brush, so that kind of put some green on there. But I'm going to come in with an Indian yellow, and I'm going to add just a tad of alizarin, tiny corner tapped off, to darken that up a little bit more. So I want it. A little bit darker. All right. Let's see if I'm happier with this. So basically, what I'm doing is coming in with more of a yellow shadow color than a green, because that's what we've got going on. We've got yellow flowers in shadow versus, say, green grass or something. Right, and I'm going to go a little darker than that. A little more alizarin and a little more of that. Ooh, I'm just going to add a touch of the, of ultramarine. That's going to maybe go too ugly. Let me see. Let's see. I like neutrals. It's not that I don't like neutrals. They have their place, certainly. I'm just going to avoid using them whenever I can. Let's add some yellow to that. Just some straight hands of yellow to bring in. You actually see the most color in the shadows. Your eyes don't see as much color in the sunlight. So I think that's a, we have a tendency to put dull colors in, um, in the shadow, but That's really the opportunity for lots of fun color. Yeah, I think I'm a little happier with that. Put it over here. Break up this line a little bit. Notice I'm pretty much ignoring my reference photo at this point. Now we're just into whatever makes makes me happy. Okay, I need to bring a little bit of that color up onto the tree. Let's call it moss or something. But it just looks funny not having some of that integrated into the tree. A little bit. Yeah, I think I'm happier with that. And we got that little bit of bush showing. I like this, but it needs one more color. One, uh, it's just a kind of a needs one more color in there. So let's. I don't want it to be real bright. 
Let's do an Indian yellow green thing and lighten that up. I think that's what I've got there, so let's add some real yellow to that, some hands of yellow. Let's see. I don't need a lot, I just need one more. Especially down there. And maybe it's starting to compete with the flowers. So I'm going to bring some more green back into it. Tone it down. And let's go a little darker. Maybe if I have a little bit darker colors too. Just need some be a little bit more Let's put a little bit of this over here so I can kind of understand what it is. It's sunlight hitting our bush pretty strongly right there. All right, well, let's do something to finish, um, finish up on our little sunflower going on there. And, oh, we were doing this. We were doing this part, which was, was good. I think I'm pretty happy with it. I'm just going to make these shapes a little more interesting and then I'm probably going to come in with some yellow. Yeah, let's do let's do that. A little bit of yellow with white. Yeah. See what happens when you go into white that is dirty? I was just going for yellow and white and I got something else entirely. You got to pay attention to your white getting dirty. <clears throat> All right. A little more texture right along here. So it's just a slightly lighter white, and in fact, it may even dry the the same color. But so let's go a little darker. A little bit of Indian in there. Just having those little subtle shifts of value is what gives you some texture. And that's just all I want back here is texture. So I'm just bringing in a little bit of that different kind of yellow. And then... Mm, I think I'll try to... I think I'm going to bring in some just real bright yellow. Just right in here. Just little bits around the white so that this area shows up as being more yellow. Get those yellow flowers going on. Okay, what can we do over here? Let's think about our our mystery sunflower-ish plants. Alright, so we've got our overall shapes going on that we like pretty well, but we know we need kind of some ins and outs to them. So, let's see, am I completely off the screen? I think I'm alright. So I'm adding some Indian yellow to yellow. And I'm not adding any white, and that's going to give me a fairly transparent color got my small brush. I'm thinking about some of these shapes having um, centers to them. Some are facing up, some are facing down, some are facing sideways. This one's kind of behind those leaves. I like that. So what I'm going to do is just darken it up a little bit because it's more in shadow. And maybe there's one here that's in shadow around another one that's not. I like these down here to be kind of shadowed, so I'm going to use this darker yellow on them. And some of these we will come back in front of the green we made. Maybe some will have 
dark behind, some will be in light. I don't know. And this is where you can look at your reference photo for ideas. This reference photo was kind of not very good when it came to actually what the details of the flowers were. But that's okay. This one I think will be a back of a flower. I'm going to add a little bit of alizarin to that color. So some, just a few of these I can get kind of a more of a sunflower center to them by some darker color. I was thinking about which direction they're facing and how I can bring in different facing flowers. This one maybe is going to be facing that way. Here's maybe one like that. Gives me some different centers to them. All right, let's take some, uh, let's do some, a few, let's do a few, I'm going to go back to one bigger brush and just do some, down at the bottom, some bigger leaves. So I'm going to take our green over here in this area and kind of mix it in some of these others. And, yeah, the, I'm, I'm not going to do those kind of leaves that I'm seeing because they're not sunflower leaves and I just want to do something different. So I'm making these, you know, sunflower leaves are kind of like heart shapes. They kind of go like a heart shape. But I want it to be pretty sketchy, so put a few down there because this is, this is the dark area down there and I'll add some even some more dark. Oh look I made those like going exactly the same direction. You don't want that. Don't want the same shape going the same direction. So I get up here I think I need to get a little bit lighter. Add some yellow. So maybe there's a few leaves up at the top. I don't want to get carried away because I don't want to lose my shapes, but maybe there is. And maybe on the back sides of some of these that are facing sideways, maybe I'm seeing some green, maybe a little darker green. Okay, so if those, every place where I've got these, this dark green stopping. I'm going to create a shape there so that it makes sense that it's something. And let's go a little darker on part of this. So I remember I, if I want a shape to look dimensional it's got to have some dark medium and light. So I'll just create that. And down here we can go a little bit lighter. We want it to stay dark, but we can bring in a couple different values just to get something going on on the edges. That's kind of fun. And maybe one of them will go to this really lighter green. And certainly where you got dark against light, I can go with my lighter green. Eh, that's enough, I think. Something going on there. And then I want to come in with my smaller brush again. Where's my number two? There it is. And let me bring in some straight yellow. So I'm picking up some straight yellow here that's clean so I can get some of that touches of bright yellow and maybe some a little more feeling of not 
Now remember this yellow is super transparent so you're not going to be able to put that yellow over any dark green and have it show up. You're just going to be able to reestablish or strengthen the yellows that you've got going on. The shapes. And we like those fun shapes we made with our negative painting so I'm not going to mess with that too much but I want to bring in some nice vivid yellow. And your um, your centers there are hopefully still a little bit wet. I was kind of got distracted. So you can pull out a little bit and soften those the centers, the mark, the brush strokes you did. And then I'm going to find clean white to add to my yellow. And there's not really anything else I can add to this to make it warmer. You know how whenever we add white, we add something to make it warmer. I could add, if I add red, it's going to start going a peachy color, which I don't really want. I just want some of these areas to be lighter and have lighter yellow. And this color, because it's got a lot of white in it, will um, cover a little bit better. So you can go over a little bit. But think about Think about that sunlight and where it would be hitting. It's not going to hit evenly all the way around the flower. It's going to be hitting here and there. Think about the direction. You know this is overhead light so the tops of these are going to be getting light. And all these ones down here are going to be more in shadow. Get some touches to create some form in those flowers and then I'll get more white just for some touches of almost pure white but you want it's got a little bit of yellow mixed in with it hardly ever use pure white and it's very sparingly with this real light color Think about where's is, where is going to be a little sparkle. What do you want to come forward? And what do you want to stay in the background? Lots and lots of paint on your brush. If you're having trouble, you know that you've got thick paint in here now, so you've got to have lots of paint on your brush. So that it just you can just put down that, that little bit have it stick. That's looking pretty good. I feel like I want this one to settle back in a little bit more. So I'm going to bring up some of my Indian yellow, which is very, um, is pretty transparent too. So if I use that Indian yellow, I can settle that one, some of these back in to the shadow. And then we'll get a little bit of pull and push, you know, some, some go receding back and some coming forward a little bit. So there's that. Hmm. Well, I don't know, we might be about done with this one. I've got a little bit of these showing down here. Let's give them a little bit of yellow, a little bit more yellow. So we know that those are actually flowers back in there. That's looking pretty good. I think, I feel like I need to bring, it's gotten really solid in there. I think I need to bring a little bit of my lighter greens into that cone shape a little bit. Let's see what we can do there, because it feels like it's too solid, like some of that background would be peeking through. So let's take our our green and add phthalo to it, and white to it, and get back to some of these colors. 
little more yellow than that, aren't they? In this area. Those are kind of yellowy. My yellow is pretty stiff. It's an old tube, I think. Okay. I'll test some of that. This is also a little bit of a darker color, which I kind of like here and there. And a uh, thick paint, you know. So we had that very blue green in here. Maybe got a little bit of yellow green. But that needs to be lighter for what I'm trying to do, which is come in around some of these with the lighter color. We did all our negative painting with our dark color when we started, which was from up there. But I think down here, I'm going to do the same things with some of this lighter color. Coming around a little bit, creating some of those shapes. Because it felt like it wasn't integrated into the background there. I like a little dark showing through. Let's see if that, I'll have to wait till that comes up to see if that did the trick or not. It might have. These are real. I'm just looking around for things that are catching my eye now that maybe that maybe I'm not excited about. I've got my swoopy shape. I like that. Um, this feels like it needs to go a little bit lighter in that dark. It's a little too dark. What if we use some of this straight green? Just in this area, kind of where the Shadow meets that. That's looking pretty good. I don't hate it. Let's see, that's looking all right back there. It doesn't draw too much attention. This big old sky hole is definitely drawing my attention. Let's see. This is where, you know, you just kind of look at the image, look at your painting, let it speak to you. Whatever captures your catches your eye in an area that you don't really want your eye caught is what you want to address. But ooh, you know what would be really cute, pretty in there. It's got a little bit of it going on, but I want to take some of this light green and my liner brush. water, too much water, and just give some of these coming up here into the dark. That's kind of fun. And then maybe, yeah, I don't think I want to bring a lot of attention there, but I just wanted it to lighten up a little bit. Um, you know what we need? I think we need some yellow over here. I don't like the way that's... or something over there. Something needs to be right here. I think a big yellow. Let's try that. If we hate it, we can undo it. But I think we need a big yellow here. A big shadow yellow, kind of. In the somewhat foreground. I don't want it to have a lot of detail, but... Oops! I went into dirty yellow and I got green. Don't want to do that. Let's see what we got. That color in there helps. Connect that shape. I don't know if I like it or not, but I think I'll leave it. 
some red. A little bit of yellow. I want to make it loose but connected, you know. Yellow. That's the kind of thing that I'll let that sit for a while and see if I like it. And if I don't, I can always redo. Paint's really wet, so. Alright, I'm going to leave that for now. I think that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I think that's our little our little wildflower painting for today. Came out something similar to a reference inspiration image that we used. So oh you know what? Okay I gotta but just one more white. See how those are all settling back? I gotta just do one more one more white, a little bit of white on those to get their to get their whiteness back. So I'll get my brush nice and clean. See if I can find a clean area of white. All right, let me see if I can just put some little bit of straight white onto these. Don't want to cover up all those lovely colors that I've already put down. I just want them to spark up a little bit because they're starting to look a little bit dull. Just barely back here. We'll let them go into very um, loose back here and blend it, but that's what always happens is your white um, or your light colors blend in. So up with these I can come up with just a few dots on some of them that are in the foreground to give us a feeling of what these flowers are about. Not a lot. Don't overdo. Talking to myself here. Okay, just that much. Just that much, I think. Gives that a little bit of a whiteness. Okay. I think I'm going to stop there. I'll put a link in the comments, but you can always go to karenalari.com. That's my website, and you can find... You you can click on Paint with Karen and you can see links to uh, all the different things I'm doing. And that's it then. Take care everybody.